Hello! Hello AOS fans! It's the Agents of Sigma. And in this video we're going to give you 20 things that have changed since Night Vault. Yeah, with the advent of the new starter set that actually doesn't look too bad with some old school warbands in there. We're seeing a lot of people coming back going, you know what, I used to be around in the Night Vault days or maybe the Beast Grave yeah, days. I haven't played since Night Vault. Yeah. Uh, these What's changed because yeah. everything's changed now. So we figured we'd do this video. Yeah, it's a breakdown of 20 things that have changed. I'm not sure it's a completely exhaustive breakdown, <laughs> but it's the uh, it's the major changes. As I said, there's 20 of them. There's quite a lot of major changes. Yeah. Um, so we're going to crack on and tell you what they are. First off the bat that you might notice is there are a lot more keywords, which is good because it helps tighten up all the rules, makes things a lot easier to follow. Number two is you can now have as many objective cards in your deck as you like. It used to only be 12, but now you can take as many as you want. But of course, number three off the back of number two, you can only have six surge cards or what used to be known as score immediately cards. So you might take 20, but only six of them can be score immediately. So there's still an inherent risk of taking lots of cards there. But you can mitigate that slightly by the new Mulligan rules, which we used to have to throw them away. Now they get shuffled back in. So if you do get that high cost third end phase card in your opening hand, you don't have to consider whether you try and carry it through at the end of the game. You can just throw it away shuffle it back in. It's not just objective cards that applies to, you can do it with your power cards as well. Rivals and Nemesis are now two key ways to play the game. One involves just taking your Warbands deck or a Rivals deck that's pre-built, and the Nemesis way of playing is by taking one Rivals deck and your Warband deck and creating your own deck from the two. It's nice and quick and simple, lightweight, but it's a nice, fun way to play the game. Some Rivals decks now have plot cards. Mm -hmm. These are little cards that come with the deck and they give you extra rules that apply when you're using the cards and you have to, if you're gonna use those cards, you have to use the plot that goes with it. Number seven on the list is they've changed the card backs. From seasons one to about four or five, they had one, and then from then onwards, they changed the backs of them, which does mean if you wanna play in some kind of competitive setting, more often than not, you're gonna to have to get some opaque card sleeves if you wanna combine an older warband with one of the newer decks. So number eight is there's a new hex called a hazard hex. Mm. So lethal hexes, cover hexes, and these new stagger hexes are all generically hazard hexes, and they all do different things when you stand in them. Number nine on the list, if you're playing a best of three game, whoever wins that first roll off to decide between boards or objectives will automatically lose the second roll off in the second game just to even things up a little bit because those board placements can be very, very key in some war bands. You now don't have to worry about just losing all of those roll offs and just having a bad experience off the back of it. Number 10 is probably the biggest change of the entire game and was such a shock, it's even rumored to have caused the death of Queen Elizabeth II. You can now carry on attacking after you've charged. So you used to be, once you charge, you couldn't activate that fighter anymore. And if you only had one fighter, basically you turn one of round three and you charge and that was it, you were done. Now you, can, you can't move them, or, but you can attack with them again. And they can do other actions too. I mean, if they've got card actions or if they want to go on guard or something, they can do that. The only thing they are restricted to is they cannot move. So if your opponent runs away, being able to attack again is a bit pointless. Another really large change is you can also make multiple moves during a round. It used to be that once you'd moved, that was it. You were stuck on the spot and you could either attack or go on guard or use one of your other actions. But now you can move and then move and then move and then move if you want. But you can't charge if you've moved. But there are also, for number 12, two new actions. These are very new in the most recent iteration, Weird Hollow, but you can now do a stun action and a barge action. And a stun action enables you to put the fighter next to you, it enables you to stagger them, and a barge action is a bit like a charge. You can run into somebody and then, then stagger them. It's quite good because it always works. So if you've got a rubbish fighter and you think, well, I can, I can try and attack, but I'll probably miss. You can it at least enables you to do something with that rubbish fighter. And what does stagger do, you might wonder? Well, that's number 13 on our list. When you are staggered, anybody who attacks you gets to re-roll one of their dice. Also, if you happen to be on guard, when you get staggered, you lose your guard counter. Number 14, another big change, of course the downfall of Liz Truss's government, was that now in the power step, it is the person whose turn it is who can react first. There used to be some crazy rules interactions with certain war bands, but they completely messed up if your opponent uh, made, made reactions before you did. You have to worry about that. Basically now, you will get to do the reaction you want to do on your turn when you've used your fighter. Whilst you can react first, your opponent also can react to exactly the same trigger. So if you do something and you have a reaction to use and your opponent also has a reaction, you can stack them and go one after the other, but whoever's turn is still gets to react first, but 
you'll get your chance afterwards. Number 16 is a brand new rule called Salvage. Mm. Maybe in your deck you've got a wizard and you've got some wizard specific cards, but that pesky magic user has died early in the game. Now during the power step, you can get rid of a wizard specific upgrade or something like that and swap it out uh, and draw a new card. And you can do it multiple times. So if for, if for example, you manage to get two or three upgrades out of the same fighter or even different fighters who are already dead, you can swap them out. It's just a, one of the steps in the power step and you just throw one away and draw a new card. When you killed someone, you used to get glory, but there was never really a phrase for that one. So a bit like on point one, where there's lots of keywords, you now have bounties. Bounties are what get paid out every time you kill somebody, and it's still one glory per kill. But if you kill a fighter that has five wounds, they count it as a large fighter, and you get two glory for that. That's a two bounty kill. Number 18, they've changed the rules for support when you're fighting. They haven't changed very much, but they're just a little bit easier to understand and slightly more effective, which means it, it feels more worth getting in those supports of the fighters. And actually, I think it's been a really good change for the game. Another rule that's changed is if you are on guard, you cannot be driven back by your attacker unless that attacker has not back, in which case you can be. Number 20, when you're setting up the game, so right at the beginning, you used to be able to offset the boards right with only three hexes being made. Now it's been changed to four. It means you can't really hide right at the back. You can still long ball people, but you can't, if you do the offset boards, you can't get quite as far away as you used to be able to. And for an extra bonus two, at number 21, the boards are now a lot busier. They've got stagger hexes on them and cover hexes as well as lethal hexes that came in in Nightfall. They're a lot busier now to look at. And number 22 is that the Godsworn Hunt are now the strongest warband. Yeah! No, they're still shit. So there's 20 things that have changed since Nightfall. Hopefully you found those useful. If you did, please do like, subscribe and ring that bell. And please do consider supporting us on Patreon. Pete and I try to make as many videos as these as possible, but with a bit of extra support, we can free up more time to make these videos. To see you soon, maybe in the weird hollow.